Hello, welcome back. We're on the trial. Oh, I know! They must have recorded him screaming on a tape or something, then played it later on! If that's true, where's the tape? I don't know. Don't just go making stuff up! Anyway, we all have rock-solid alibis for when we heard Hifumi scream. Since all of us were there together, clearly none of us could have killed him. And it does not stop there. There was also the moment when we discovered his body had disappeared. When his body vanished from the nurse's office, Hina and I were in the bathroom together, while everyone else was in the equipment room, correct? And then, there's the disappearance of Taka's body from the equipment room. At that time, we were all gathered together in the nurse's office because of Hifumi going missing. Oh, don't forget! I was passed out in the equipment room the whole time! Wait, then what if Genocide Jill did it? She could have dragged Taka's body out of there right then! Even if she could pull that off, there's no way she could have done the same with Hifumi's body. Because, as we just established, she was passed out in the equipment room when his body disappeared. Besides, I didn't do either of them anyway. In other words, it is impossible that any of us could have killed Hifumi or moved either of their bodies. On the other hand, Hiro and Kyoko had disappeared. So they most certainly could have done those things. Hmm. So what now, Kyoko? For now, we can't get fixated on who did it, or we'll just keep going around in circles. So instead of who, I propose we start talking about how. In particular, I think we need to figure out how Hifumi's body got moved. That's true. We searched everywhere but we couldn't figure out how to explain his body disappearing. And according to what Celeste said... His body apparently disappeared in the one minute her and Hina took their eyes off of it. But to carry that much weight from the first floor up to the third? In that short amount of time? Oh man, yeah! There's no way! It'd be impossible! Well, what if I told you there was a way to make the impossible possible? What? How? If the dead body were to move itself. The, the dead body m moved on its own? <laughs> no! Not another... <laughs> no! I don't think it has anything to do with the occult. I think what she's implying is, we thought Hifumi was dead, but perhaps in reality, he was still alive. He was... alive? Are you saying Hifumi wasn't carried out of the nurse's office, but simply walked out on his own? But I mean, we found his body. He was dead. Perhaps he was simply playing dead. That... it isn't possible. Are you saying that when we first found Hifumi in the nurse's office, there's a chance he was actually still alive? No, it is impossible. Hifumi was dead, without a doubt. And you know that how? Surely you heard the body discovery announcement along with the rest of us. Hifumi's dead body had been found. And that is why the announcement was made. Are we really so sure about that? Maybe the announcement was intended to signal someone else's discovery. Shoot! Right. So it's the other way around. I refuse to give up yet! 
When we first found Hifumi in the nurse's office, there's a chance he was actually still alive. No, it is impossible. Hifumi was dead, without a doubt. And you know that how? Surely you heard the body discovery announcement along with the rest of us. Hifumi's dead body had been found. And that is why the announcement was made. Are we really so sure about that? Maybe the announcement was intended to signal someone else's discovery. Shoot! Are you saying that when we first found Hifumi in the nurse's office, there's a chance he was actually still alive? No, it is impossible. Hifumi was dead, without a doubt. And you know that how? Surely you heard the body discovery announcement along with the rest of us. Hikumi's dead body had been found. And that is why the announcement was made. Are we really so sure about that? Maybe the announcement was intended to signal someone else's discovery. Are you saying that when we first found Hifumi in the nurse's office, there's a chance he was actually still alive. No, it is impossible. Hifumi was dead, without a doubt. And you know that how? Surely you heard the body discovery announcement along with the rest of us. Hifumi's dead body had been... No, it's wrong! Was the body discovery announcement that was made really intended for Hifumi? Of course it was. The announcement played right after we discovered his body. Maybe. But that was also the same time that Taka's body was found. That's right. It wasn't long after finding his body that we heard the announcement. So there's a good chance we've made a mistake in there somewhere. I think we've confused whether the announcement was for Hifumi or Taka. First of all, if two bodies had been found, there really should have been two announcements. Maybe Monokuma simply got lazy and rolled them together into one. What do you say, Monokuma? Any comment? Well, it's a very sensitive issue, so I can't go into too much detail. But what I can say about the body discovery announcement is that it's only broadcast when three or more people find a dead body for the first time. That didn't answer our question, man. We're asking if you're a lazy bum. No, actually, that was plenty. Huh? He said it's only broadcast when a body is discovered for the first time. Which means, even if we find the same body again later, he won't make the announcement again. If that's true, then why was the announcement made again later on? Huh? Later on? Exactly. We heard the body discovery announcement twice. heard it a second time in the repository when we rediscovered the two bodies. It didn't seem weird at the time, but it contradicts what Monokuma just told us, doesn't it? Exactly. If we were actually rediscovering both bodies, the announcement shouldn't have played. And in reality, when the two dead bodies were rediscovered, one of them was actually being discovered for the first time. So, when we found Hifumi the first time in the nurse's office, he wasn't actually dead yet. Meaning, he wasn't actually found dead until we came upon him in the repository. And that's just part of it. There's one other thing that leads me to believe he was still. Oh, oh, I know, I know! <laughs> because he was the first one to find dead! Bada bing, bada boom! That is the worst logic I have ever heard. But honestly, I do not think there's anything that can prove he was still alive. Okay then, 
Let's take another look at the events surrounding the discovery of his body. Then it should become clear whether he was really alive or not. This whole thing is pointless. Well, here's one thing we do know. The first time we found Hifumi's body was in the nurse's office. And then, while me and Celeste were in the bathroom, his body disappeared. And the next time we saw his body, it was in the repository. But when you compare his body before being moved and his body after being moved, other than the change in how it was positioned, there was no notable difference. No, it's wrong! In fact, there was one clear difference between Hufumi and the nurse's office in the repository. His glasses. That fact alone proves that he was only playing dead in the beginning. Perhaps you'd like to fill the rest of us in? When we found Hifumi in the nurse's office, his glasses were covered with blood. But when we found him again later in the repository, they were spotless. And I found the item he used to wipe them clean in the nurse's office trash can. Glasses cleaning cloth featuring a certain cartoon mascot. One look at the blood stain on the cloth should make things clear. This piece of cloth was used to wipe Kifumi's glasses clean. And the mascot on the cloth is the same one that's on the digital camera, right? And whose digital camera was it? Kifumi's, of course. The character was... Princess Piggle. From Demon Angel Pretty Pudgy Princess, I think. I highly doubt anyone but Hifumi would have brought something like this to school. I see your point. And the only people here who wear glasses are... I wouldn't be caught dead using a tacky piece of garbage like that. A few tissues is all I need to keep my glasses clean. Then there's no question. It belonged to Hifumi. Mm. Mm. So what you're saying is... What exactly? What I'm saying is... The blood on his glasses was wiped away using his own glasses cleaning cloth. Even if that is true, it does not mean he wiped the blood off himself. But who would benefit from a clean pair of glasses other than the glasses owner? That's a good point. And it must have been him, right? So let's assume that Hifumi was still alive in the nurse's office. He pretends to be dead. Then when he's alone, he wipes his glasses clean so he can see. Then he stands up and walks out on his own two feet. And with that, the impossible task of moving his copious corpse becomes possible, wouldn't you say? But then, if he was just pretending to be dead... What was with all that blood? Was it paint or something? The fridge in the nurse's office contains packs of blood for emergencies. He probably used one of those. He figured if he was gonna play dead, he should go all out. So he just dumped it everywhere. But he got crazy with it and had to wipe his glasses off when he was done. God, what an idiot. And if Kifumi was still alive at that point, the disappearance of Taka's body is easily explained. It should be perfectly obvious who must have moved Taka's corpse. I got it! It could only have been Kifumi. While we were all gathered in the nurse's office, he went to the equipment room and took Taka's body. That also explains how the door to the repository got locked. The door was locked? Well, after the bodies disappeared, we all went looking for them, right? So me and Sakura headed for the repository. But when we got there, the door was locked. 
and the repository door can only be locked from the inside. Which means, when Hina and Sakura got to the repository, someone was already inside. And it could only have been Hifumi, who just finished stashing Taka's body there. He convinced us all he was dead, and when he saw his chance, he dragged Taka's body to the repository. So, Hifumi wasn't just another victim in this case. He was one of the assailants. But that means he took part in the murders. I just can't believe it. If you're having trouble, would you like me to show you one more piece of evidence? There's more? Oh, absolutely. The single biggest fact pointing to his involvement has yet to be revealed. You know what I'm talking about, right Makoto? about the note Hifumi had hidden away, aren't you? Uh, hidden note? That's right. We found it stuffed in his pants. What? In his pants? Mm. Yes, his pants. Okay, well, forget about the pants for now. Take a look. Ah, that's the note I was telling you about. The one that told me where to go. Huh? Wait. This one's a little different. In my note it said, Monokuma can't find out, so don't tell anyone else for now. Let's meet in the rec room at 1 a.m. I see. Then this note isn't the same one Hiro got. It's not the same? In other words, the killer got in touch with another person besides Hiro, and that person could only have been... I got it! That's right! Taka! The killer used this note to draw out Taka and murder him. Hello! Over here! Objection! Objection! I don't really understand what's going on, but Kifumi had that letter, right? So whoever wrote it wasn't drawing out TikTok, they were drawing out Happy! Um, just to be clear, TikTok is Taka and Happy is Kifumi. Right? Oh, yes! Why must you ruin it every time? <laughs> Puppy had the note, right? Then the person it was intended for must have been Puppy! But remember what the note said. What time did it say to me? 6 a.m., I believe. The time doesn't matter! The note has nothing to do with TikTok! No, it's wrong! No! There absolutely is a connection! What? What the hell are you talking about? The note said to meet at 6 a.m., which is the same time Taka was murdered. We've already proven that using his wristwatch. But there's more. Look where the note says to meet. The equipment room, right? Which is where Taka was killed. I see. So, Taka was murdered at both the time and place written in the note. I think that should be plenty to show that this note was definitely meant for Taka. Hmm. Well, when you put it like that... No further objections! <laughs> then someone used that note to trick Taka. Just the same as me. <sighs> the culprit really is a cold-blooded monster. Telling people they found a way out. But if they gave the note to Taka... What was Hifumi doing with it? Stuffed down his pants, no less! Most likely. Hifumi stole it off Taka's corpse after he died. Huh? He stole it? Where's your proof? Go ahead, show us. Yeah? When I searched Taka's body, 
I saw that his lifeless hand was gripping a small scrap of paper. If I'm right about this, the sheet of paper this piece came from is... I knew it! It fits perfectly with the note we found hidden on Hifumi. Then Taka's scrap and Hifumi's note... Yup, they're from the same piece of paper. Hifumi had the note meant for Taka, while Taka's corpse still grasped a small piece of that note. There's only one way to explain it. Taka died clutching the note. Hifumi tried to free the note from his death grip, leaving behind only one small scrap. Did I get all that right? That means Hifumi knew the note was important. Exactly. Which proves that he was an accomplice in the murder. Whoa. Yeah. After seeing all this, Hifumi was super involved in this whole thing for sure. In fact, he was behind the whole thing. In fact, he's still alive! Sorry, no. When we found him in the repository, Hifumi was truly and completely dead. The second body discovery announcement proves that. So then, who killed Hifumi? Whoever did is the mastermind, the true killer. He was killed in the repository, so he must have been killed not long after transporting Taka's body. So, he must have been killed after Taka's body vanished, but before we found both bodies in the repository. During that time, we'd all split up and were searching for Taka's missing body. In other words, during that time, none of us have alibis. Wait! But me and Sakura were together! Stop trying to steal the spotlight, you stupid walrus! <laughs> Who are you calling a walrus? Anyway, when they were killed bothers me, too. But there's something that's been bothering me even more. And what might that be? The weapon they used to kill Hifumi! The weapon? Yeah, because I mean, according to the Monokuma file, the way Taka and Hifumi were killed was almost the same with them having similar fractures and all. But Justice Hammer 3 and 4 were still laying around in the nurse's office and equipment room, right? So if Hifumi was killed in the repository, the culprit would have had to grab one of the hammers, kill Hifumi, then put the hammer back where they found it. But wouldn't that be seriously risky for him? I'm surprised. It seems there's some semblance of a brain knocking around that skull of yours after all. Hell yeah! It's packed in there good and tight. He's right, though. I don't understand it either. The Monokuma file makes it clear that they were killed using similar instruments. But if the hammers were already laying around those other rooms... So the question is, how could the culprit have gotten their hands on either of the hammers? Personally, I haven't a clue. So which hammer was used to attack Celeste? Number one or number two? Those were accounted for in other rooms, too. And I don't think either one is big enough to kill someone. Um... Then... Uh... Is it not possible they used a different weapon? I don't think it is possible. They were both killed with the same kind of thing, right? So then, what was used to kill Hifumi? What was used to kill Hifumi? Was it Justice Hammer 3? Maybe Justice Hammer 4? Well, whatever it was, there's one thing we have to figure out. How was the culprit able to move around so freely with the weapon? How did nobody witness them carrying it? Sounds like a Justice Hammer 5 was about to make its appearance! <laughs> Check out murdergear.com slash hammer time for more info! Well, one thing seems pretty clear. The murder weapon had to be one of the Justice Hammers! No, it's wrong! The murder <laughs> weapon wasn't a Justice Hammer at all. No, it was something completely different. But, seriously? A different weapon? Specifically, a hammer from the repository. The killer could have easily used that to kill Hifumi. Now, all the hammers in the repository were covered in flecks of grit and debris. But for some reason, 
one of them had been scrubbed clean. Huh? And the reason it had been scrubbed clean was most likely because it was used to commit murder. If the hammer got covered in Hifumi's blood, of course they'd have to clean it off. I'd also like to point out that the repository has all kinds of hammers. Big ones, small ones, and even some flat mallet-like ones. I think whoever made the justice hammers used those as a basis for their design. If that's true, that would explain the Monokuma file's note about the wounds being similar. So Hifumi moved Taka's body to the repository, where someone then used a hammer to kill him. Whoever did that was the true killer. The one Hifumi was working with. And the one who betrayed him. Hold on a moment. I still think it's strange to assume someone was working together with him. The way the graduation rule works, there is no benefit to helping someone else carry out a murder. So the idea that anyone would work together like that is simply ludicrous. We talked about this, did we not? Based on the rules that have been laid out for us, even if more than one person is complicit in the murder, only the one who actually carried out the act can graduate and survive. Assuming the rule holds true, it is simply impossible that two people work together on this. That is how the rule was explained to us. But that only really applies if there is one murder, right? In this case, however, there were two murders. Wrong murder. Shoot! I don't know. Sorry! Based on the rules that have been laid out for us, even if more than one person is complicit in the murder, only the one who actually carried out the act can graduate and survive. Assuming the rule holds true, it is simply impossible that two people work together on this. That is how the rule was explained to us. But that only really applies if there's one murder, right? In this case, however, there were two murders. Based on the rules that have been laid out for us, even if more than one person is complicit in the murder, only the one who actually carried out the act can graduate and survive. Assuming the rule holds true. No, that's wrong! Since there were two murders, it's at least plausible that more than one person was involved. What do you mean? If there'd only been one murder, then yes, the idea of an accomplice isn't really worth considering. Naturally, if only one person can be saved per murder, an accomplice has no risk versus reward benefit. Risk versus reward benefit? The payoff for working together. The reward that balances out the risk of taking part in the scheme. There's no point in being someone's accomplice if there's no benefit to you. However, if there were some potential mutual reward for the risk, then cooperation becomes possible. You're saying that two people could act as each other's accomplices to commit two separate murders. I think that's what the true killer told Hifumi. They would each have an accomplice for their crime. And based on the case's events, Hifumi would have been the first one to act, murdering Taka. They made him carry out the first murder so he couldn't back out of helping them later on. So in this case, there wasn't one single person committing multiple murders. Instead, each person killed someone, creating two separate incidents. And it only looked like one person because that's how the true killer designed it to look. A single suspicious individual, a similar weapon used in each crime, disappearing bodies. By creating one seamless set of circumstances, they made it look like one person was behind it all. The Mastermind picked their target and managed to convince him to go along with their plan. And then, to avoid the no accomplices rule, they simply killed their accomplice. Which, if true, means that betraying Hifumi was part of the plan from the very beginning. But that's just... awful! How could anyone be so cruel? You think so? I can't help but admire its cunning. Still, their choice of accomplice seems... 
on. I understand how an accomplice could be involved. But then, who was the one pulling Yafumi's strings? That's problem numero uno right now! Here's my answer! It was Celeste. Ah, so I'm the suspicious individual now, am I? <laughs> I really do hate this kind of joke. A joke? I wonder. So what you are saying, then, is that I specifically chose to work together with Hifumi. The idea that I would choose to spend any amount of time interacting with him, that I would go within ten feet of that shit pump! Brain that lazy, worthless, goddamn idiot! Uh, 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 pardon -moi. Just to be clear, there is evidence to support it. Is that so? It is. Throughout the investigation, there was certain behavior that was common only to the two of you. Considering what we've learned so far, it only further proves that the two of you were working together. I got it! The behavior they had in common has to do with the suspicious individual in the suit, doesn't it? The only ones who ever actually saw Robo Justice firsthand were Celeste and Hifumi. Shush, the adults are talking now. Sorry. As he said, only Celeste <laughs> and Hifumi ever laid eyes on the costumed individual. If we accept that Hifumi was one of the culprits, we can't help but suspect what Celeste has said as well. Are you saying? Everything they told us was a lie? After taking Hifumi to the nurse's office, we all began our search for this individual, correct? And not too long after that, do you remember what Celeste said? We headed to the second floor specifically because of what she claimed to have seen. Next, to draw us all to the physics lab up on the third floor, she let out a blood-curdling scream. And when we'd all come to see what was wrong, what was it she said? Once she'd done her job of getting us all up to the physics lab, it was time for her partner to get to work. was to get us to divide into two groups so that we would discover both bodies at the same time? In fact, Celeste was precisely the one who proposed that we split up. Well, if Celeste and Hifumi were working together, all those chance events suddenly become connected. And on top of that, that piercing cry of yours early on. Ha -ha! That was to signal Hifumi, wasn't it? It was your way of telling him, we are on the third floor, everything's going according to plan. Why else would you let out a scream that could have carried across the sea? I just realized another strange thing. When we found Hifumi in the nurse's office, who we now know was only pretending to be dead, Celeste, you were the first one to say he'd been murdered. You wanted to make sure we wouldn't have any doubt in our minds. I... I don't believe it! Everything... the whole thing was one big act! Hina, you were with Celeste when Hifumi's body disappeared, right? Yeah. I was feeling kind of sick, so Celeste took me to the bathroom. Wait! Then that was... She wasn't worried about you. She just saw a chance to help Hifumi sneak out of the nurse's office. Each piece isn't much by itself, but start putting them together and the picture gets very ugly indeed. Wouldn't you agree, Celeste? I have no idea what you mean. Don't bother trying to deny it. You made one fatal mistake. Oh, 
Did I? I didn't even catch it myself when you first said it. But looking back, I can say that that one little slip-up was your undoing. I'm talking about what you said after Hifumi's body disappeared and we returned to the nurse's office. I remember her saying that too, but I don't understand what's so strange about it. Then pay attention. Sakura, Toko, and I were first to discover Taka's body in the equipment room. Then Makoto showed up and told us Hifumi had been killed. So Sakura and I left with Makoto. Once we were in the hall, we ran into Celeste, and the four of us headed to the nurse's office. Now, the entire time we were together, none of us said anything about Taka being dead. Think about it. Celeste's comment doesn't make sense. It was completely out of place. Yeah, I see what you're talking about. Although I don't really get what it means. You hear that, Celeste? Everyone's having some trouble understanding. Could you repeat what you said? If you're really not the culprit, you shouldn't have any problem repeating it, right? <laughs> All I said was... They must really be enjoying this. Enjoying the sight of us standing around, frightened and confused. They must be positively elated. We are all going to die here. We are going to die, just like those guys died. And that is all I said. And that's all it takes to finish this. It's obvious, isn't it? What was so strange about Celeste's comment? <laughs> All I said was, they must really be enjoying this. Enjoying the sight of us standing around, frightened and confused. They must be positively elated. We are all going to die here. We are going to die, just like those guys died. And that is all I said. And that's all it takes to finish this. It's obvious, isn't it? What was so strange about Celeste's comment? All I said was... They must really be enjoying this. Enjoying the sight of us standing around, frightened and confused. They must be positively elated. We are all going to die here. We are going to die. Just like the... No, it's wrong. That's right. There's no reason Celeste should have said, just like those guys died. When she said that, none of us had told her Taka was dead. Exactly. And we didn't run into her until after we were all out in the hall. So there was never any chance for her to have seen his body in the equipment room for herself. So how did you know, Celeste? How did you know more than one person had been killed? And how did you know they were both guys? Because Kyoko had also disappeared, right? So she could have been dead too. You all have such vivid imaginations, you know that? Imaginations? You claim that I was lying when I told you about the suspicious person I saw. Then what about the picture I took? How do you explain this picture of the costumed villain dragging Hifumi away? It, it has to be some kind of setup, right? So let's put the suit on, and then... Have you so quickly forgotten? You are the only one who could have possibly fit into that suit. Plus, I happen to know that this particular camera does not have a timer. In other words, it is an unassailable fact that this is a picture of Hifumi being dragged away. If everything I told you was a lie, how can this picture exist? Simple. Are we sure that's really a picture of the suspect dragging Hifumi away? 
What could you possibly mean by that? Surely there are other explanations than the one you've offered up. No, there is no other explanation. It's not a picture of the suspect dragging Hifumi away. I would say it's a picture of Hifumi dragging the suspect away. That's certainly within the realm of possibility. The one being dragged off in that picture isn't Hifumi, but the person in the robot suit. We've simply been led to believe that it's the other way around. And the strange costume might only exist to lead us astray even farther. If you saw someone wearing something like that in this situation, of course you'd notice and be suspicious. That's what happened! You put me to sleep and made me out to be the bad guy in all this! <laughs> <laughs> Such a thing is utterly impossible. Hifumi was dragging him away? <laughs> ridiculous. Is it? I don't think it's ridiculous at all. Then shut your mouth and allow me to educate you. You dressed me up in that suit after I passed out. Then you just draped me across Hifumi and had him carry my weight. You tried to make me look like the bad guy. Like I said, ridiculous. As you can see in the picture, the suspect is standing perfectly upright. If the person inside the suit was unconscious, there's no way they could stand up straight like No, that's wrong! No, even if the person inside the suit were unconscious, they could still stand up like that. Because that robo-justice suit had a certain characteristic. That's right! They totally made a mistake when they made it, so it couldn't bend at the waist. I'm not so sure that was a mistake. I think the suit was designed from the beginning to be used the way it was. Celeste and Hifumi took the suit they'd specially designed and stuffed Hiro into it. That's how they were able to fake that whole thing. The point of it all was to make us believe whoever was in the suit was to blame. <laughs> well then, I suppose this is checkmate. Checkmate? <laughs> Have you forgotten what Hifumi told us as he lay dying? When we asked him who had attacked him, his answer was quite clear, was it not? He said, and I quote, Yasuhiro! In other words, Yasuhiro Hakakurei! Wait, but my name isn't really Yasuhiro! It's actually... Your confusing statements don't make any sense. He did say Yasuhiro, but are we sure he was really pointing the finger at Hiro? What the hell are you talking about? I'll... Kyoko, what do you mean by that? Think back to how Hifumi used to talk to us. How did he refer to each of us? I got it! That's right, our last names. He called us all by our last names. Exactly. I know I heard him say Mr. Nayagi more than once, for example. So if Hifumi did mean to say Hiro's name, he would have said his last name, Hagakure. I'm sure it was just incidental. By chance, he just... his first name. Indecent? Don't talk. Random chance. Now isn't that a convenient explanation? No. There's no reason to think he would have said the name any different than normal. But he must have run out of energy before he could say any more. 
So Hifumi was trying to tell us the last name of whoever killed him? But the name he said doesn't apply to anyone here. Well, no. Hold on. There's one person it could apply to, and that's Celeste. She never actually told us what her real name is. <laughs> what did you just say? To think you'd take your false accusation so far, I don't know whether to laugh or spit! Come on! Enough with your idiotic blather! Yasuhiro is a loser's name! Do I look like a loser to you? Well, do I? What? I think I've earned the right to be a little on edge. Okay, then fill us in. What's your real name? So, make sure your ear holes are wide open and listen up! My real name is Celestia Ludenberg. Could you please stop making me repeat myself over and over again? <laughs> Fumi was trying to tell us something. He wanted us to know the killer's last name, Yasuhiro. If there's one person here who might have that last name... It would have to be you, Celeste. You haven't told anyone what your real name is. How many times do I have to tell you? My name is... Celestia Ludenberg, God damn it! How long do you plan to go on pretending? I'm not pretending. It's the truth. And since you have no way to contradict me... That's the only truth there is! Moron! The Fumi was trying to tell us something. He wanted us to know the killer's last name. Yasuhiro. If there's one person here who might have that last name... It would have to be you, Celeste. You haven't told anyone what your real name is. How many times do I have to tell you? My name is... Celestia Ludenberg, God damn it! <laughs> How long do you plan to go on pretending? I'm not pretending. It's the truth! And since you have no way to contradict me... That's the only truth there is! Moron! The phony was oh. trying to tell us something. He wanted us to know the killer's last name. Yasuhiro. Oh, if there's one person here who might have that last name... It would have to be you, Celeste. You haven't told anyone what your real name is. How many times do I have to tell you? My name is... Celestia Ludenberg, God damn it! How long do you plan to go on pretending? I'm not pretending. It's the truth. And since you have no way to contradict me... Uh -huh. No, that's wrong! That's it! The handbook! What?! Anytime you turn your handbook on, it shows the owner's name when it boots up, right? Monokuma told us all about it before. So all we have to do is check her handbook, and that'll clear up everything. That's how we can find out Celeste's real name. That, that's an invasion of privacy. I, I refuse to cooperate. Celeste, can you please just tell us what really happened? Please, just tell us. Even when I'm put in check, it's just my nature not to give up. Because, because, because until the game's over, you never know what might happen. Fine then. Let me settle it. Let me go over the case again, from the beginning, and that'll bring everything to an end. Let's finish this.
persuaded someone to help carry out the murder. And that person was... Kifumi. With an accomplice, the killer was able to execute a number of otherwise impossible schemes. First, they convinced someone to meet them in the rec room last night at one in the morning. Someone they met with was Hiro. The murderous duo intended to pass Hiro off as the prime suspect. So when they met up with him, they drugged him, knocked him out, and stuffed him into the robo-justice suit. Next, Ifumi positioned himself to make it look like robo-justice was attacking him while the killer used a digital camera to take pictures of the assault. They did all this just to create evidence that would put the suspicion on Hira. When they were done with him, they shoved him, still unconscious, into the pool room locker. And then finally, at 6 a.m., they moved into the murder phase of their plan. They called Taka to the equipment room. That's where Hifumi killed him, making it the scene of the first murder. The murder weapon was Justice Hammer 4, which was left there in the equipment room. The reason Hammer Number 4 was used was to create confusion about the order of the crimes. So, next they falsified two more assault incidents. For these attacks, the killers pretended to be the victims to solidify Robo-Justice as the suspect. The first fake incident was the attack in the rec room. There, the killers wanted us to see Justice Hammer 1 and the Robo-Justice pictures they'd taken. They wanted to make sure we bought the surprise attack store. The second fake incident was the attack in the library. This time, they planted Justice Hammer 2 and an injured Hifumi to sell us that story. With these two incidents, the killers were able to create a certain preconception in our minds that the suspect was increasing the size of the hammers and attacking people in order as they did. We fell right into their trap and started looking for the suspect based on that. While we did that, we left Hifumi alone in the nurse's office. This was exactly what Hifumi was hoping for. a blood packet from the refrigerator and Justice Hammer 3 and turned the room into a crime scene in which he himself had apparently been brutally murdered. He let out a scream to draw us back and when we returned, that's what we found. Meanwhile, the other group that had been out searching found Taka's body at the same time. So when we heard the body discovery announcement, we naturally assumed it was for Hifumi. We left the nurse's office, and Hifumi once again took advantage of the situation. He simply got up and made his escape. When we learned his body had disappeared, we all rushed back to the nurse's office. And once again, Ifumi had the chance he was waiting for. This time, he snuck into the equipment room. He wrapped Taka's body in a tarp and used the dolly to move it all the way down to the repository. That explains how each of the bodies disappeared. But even Hifumi didn't know what the true killer had in mind for their final act.
Their plan all along was to kill Hifumi and get rid of the one person who could betray them. And they did it using an ordinary, everyday hammer from the repository. That should cover everything that happened in this case. And the villain behind it all is... Admit it? <laughs> Listen to you, trying to take charge, as if you're my private instructor. I, Celestia Ludenberg. Actually, no, Taiko Yasuhiro is fine. Taiko? So, you finally accepted it. I'm the kind of person, once I've lost, I don't like things to drag on. Interesting. Okay, Monokuma. I'm ready to begin. Or, no. I suppose this is the end. Yeah. 